In talking about work being done, we've decided that work is calculated as a force times a displacement. We can have um, another way to represent that using a graph. If we were to make a graph of force on the y-axis and displacement on the x-axis, when you have a constant force and you push something, as long as the force doesn't change, um, in this case, we can see that if that force is constant, we could multiply that force by the displacement. Well, if I do length times width, I get area. And so if we make a graph of force and displacement, the work done would show up as the area under the curve. Now we say curve, and this is a straight line, so this is a line that has no, no changing slope, right? But it would still be the work under that line. It would still be the force times that displacement. Um, even if your displacement is, whether it starts at zero or it doesn't start at zero, um, if, if in the case it doesn't start at zero, then the, then the force times the change in displacement would still give me the work. So using a graph is another way to represent the work done. Um, and remember that work would be calculated as area under the curve. So if we took an example and we said, well, what if we apply a 40 Newton force to an object and it moves from a position of one meter to a final position of four meters? And we wanna know how much work does it take to do that, that job. So we would simply say the work would be 40 newtons times four meters minus one meter, final position minus initial position, delta x. And that would give us 120 joules. So all of these are for cases when a force is constant. But in physics, we have a special case when force is not constant. And that's what happens when we start dealing with things that tend to stretch. Um, or strain. Anything that tends to stretch or strain we might call a sprain. So when we have um, a force that is changing, we have to look at doing work a little bit differently. If this force varies, like when you stretch a spring, um, here I have a, a very heavy, difficult, stiff spring to stretch, like a trampoline spring, or you might have a spring that has some space in between the coils like this would be a stretching spring or compressing spring so I could I could compress the spring and the spring wants to push back or if I stretch the spring the spring wants to come back inward it doesn't have to be specifically a spring I mean I could take this little squishy Einstein guy and if I apply a force and squish Einstein up he wants to push back go back to equilibrium so you can kind of treat this as a spring, but you can see that, or maybe you can't see, um, as you apply a force, that force keeps changing. The more we distort this, the more the force changes. And maybe if we want to distort it twice as much, it takes more than twice the force. Or perhaps you've been able to play with one of these. Still a spring by accident, but very fun. But if it was hanging in equilibrium and you apply a force to distort it, and you pull it away, you're displacing that spring. Well, it wants to pull back up. It has a restoring force. And so it wants to go back to where it was before. So we have to deal with work a little differently in these cases. And there was a guy that was investigating this relationship between force and displacement for things that stretch. His name is Robert Hooke. And he said that when a string is stretched out, that string wants to restore itself and come back to equilibrium. And that is a restoring force. And he said that restoring force is proportional to the displacement. So if you pull it farther away, the force wants to be bigger. Um, and so this, uh, this relationship between force and, dis and stretch requires a constant, um, K. And so the constant is a property of every different, every spring. This spring constant, K, um, can be found by comparing how much force it takes to actually stretch something. So if you wanted to try to stretch the slinky, it doesn't take very much force. This would have a very small K. But if I wanted to try to stretch this um, trampoline spring, this takes a lot of force and it doesn't stretch very far. So this would have a very high K value.
So K tells us something about the stiffness of that particular spring. And K is bound by change in force over change in stretch. The units for K would be newtons per meter. And remember, we say K is a property of the spring. That means it has to do with well, what type of materials is that made of? And how tightly wound is that? What are the, the physical properties of that spring? So when we do work to stretch a spring, you apply a force, it displaces, the string wants to pull back. And so that was the negative sign that you saw in Hooke's law, F equals negative K times X. This is telling me that the force and the displacement are in opposite directions. But we have two different, two different works. We can have work that we are doing on the spring, and then we can have the work that the spring wants to do to pull it back. So work done on the spring is considered positive work, right? Our force our causing, is causing our dis the displacement. And then work done by the spring, the spring wants to pull it in the opposite direction. That is considered negative work. So from Hooke's law, force is K times X. If we then look at a graph of force and stretch, this force changes as the object stretches and so we would get sort of a triangle instead of a rectangle. Well, work is still going to be area. It's just that it's now going to be area of a triangle. And remember, area of a triangle is going to be one half the base times the height. So it's going to be, um, if, if, I, if I do this stretch and I do this average force, I would have you know, a starting force and an ending force. And if I add them up and divide by two, I get the average force, which should be somewhere about in here. So we can say it is one half K times X squared, or one half X times the average force, but F is K times X. So if we do one half X times K times X, we get one half K X squared. So this is how we find the energy of a spring. And you'll know that this is a spring because it has K in it. Remember work for, um, for doing, applying a force and having something move, that was just force times distance. That was in joules. This is one half K times X squared. K is the spring constant. So this is work in a spring to stretch the spring. And then this is still gonna be measured in joules as well. So uh, there are, like I said, there's two forces done uh, used on a spring. So whether we're stretching or we're dealing with a compression spring, there's a force that's, that's outside of it. That's the force that's um, on the spring. And then there's this reaction force by the spring that, to pull it back. So um, this, this determines whether you're doing positive work or negative work. Remember, the work that you're doing on the spring is considered positive work. The work the spring is, is doing back is considered negative work. So let's take a look at one problem. It says the spring um, has a four kilogram mass suspended from it and it produces a displacement of 20 centimeters. And they want to know what is the spring constant. So if we know that this 20, or this four kilogram mass caused that displacement, then the work done to stretch it would be, uh, in theory, force times distance. But this force keeps changing. Um, but we do know that the, that the force in this is going to be that mass times gravity. And then, that, so that would be, you know, four kilograms times 9.8 is 39.2 newtons, or four kilograms times 10 is almost 40 newtons, right? And then if we're trying to find the spring constant, that K is change in force over change in stretch. So we would do that 39.2, almost 40 newtons, divided by the stretch, 20 centimeters, we had to convert to meters, so 0.2 meters. So we get a spring constant of 196 newtons per meter. And that's how we would find K. Well, then if I wanted to find the work done in stretching this, I would use that K and this displacement, and I would do one half K times delta X squared, and this would give me the work. Um, work is, remember, in Newton meters? Well, if I'm doing a Newtons per meter times X squared, meter squared, then that's gonna still give me Newtons times meters, which is still a joule. So whether I'm stretching an object that's a spring um, and doing work on it, or if I'm doing, you know, force times distance, the unit for work is still always going to be the same. This is another problem. So there's one other case that we need to kind of talk about, and that is that what happens when your initial position is not zero? 
how do you get the work done when you're going to stretch a spring from an already stretched place and now you want to stretch it even further all right and that is one half it's, it's change in one half kx squared the thing about stretching things is that if you apply a force and say I can apply a force of 20 newtons and it stretches one centimeter it's not guaranteed that if I apply another 20 newtons, it's gonna stretch another one centimeter. That's not true with a, with a spring. It's actually gonna to continue to take me more and more and more force until eventually I can't provide any more force and this is stretching less and less and less as I get closer to the end of it. We wanna make sure that we don't stretch something beyond its ability to pull it back. That's deforming the object. And if there's permanent deformation, well then we've, we've ruined the spring. Of course, everybody knows what a ruined slinky probably looks like, and that certainly is no fun to play with anymore. So we want to say that, you know, if this is not deformed, if this is still a perfectly elastic stretching of, of what we're doing here, then the work would not be just one half kx squared, but it's going to be one half k times the final position squared minus one half k times the initial position squared. And so then I'm getting a change in one half kx squared. And that is the work done to change it from, from that initial position, say if it was already stretched out, and then I wanna stretch it further, it takes more work. So it took some work to get to the first position, it's gonna take more work to get to the second position. And the work done is the difference in those two. So summing things up, remember work is force times distance times the cosine of theta because that force and that displacement need to be in the same direction when you are applying a constant force. But work for springs is also, um, there, there, there is a spring constant, K is change in force over change in stretch, and work for springs is found in one half K X squared or a change in one half K X squared.